Namaste everyone. This is Dr. Aisha Butalia. I welcome you all for today's session on machine learning for business. Okay, this is a very good site. You can just note it down. Objectiveit.com slash data dash analytics slash machine dash learning. Uh, the website is also given on the description box. Okay, it will be shared to you. So you can even refer that. It is a very good site where uh, machine learning topics are given in a summarized way. So the highlight for today's topic would be how machine intelligence and artificial intelligence along with data mining is related to machine learning, especially for business purposes. How machine learning is used, how we develop, help achieve your objective for machine learning and more about machine learning techniques so let's start first of all whatever project we do okay we should always think about in terms of business sometimes students uh, just take the topic for the sake of research right but you should understand that that research should be beneficial for the society at large and the major scale for uh, business not only of social cause even the organizations or ngos which are running for social cause they want money right how are you going to serve anybody without money what you are going to provide them so the basic necessities uh, the poverty region needs is that food shelter and your normal needs right for your cleaning purpose for your self health care so health issues uh, shelter and agriculture they become the main uh, source of our living okay even in terms of social cause but there are 20 percent people who work on social cause lest all the people are working for money even those who are working for money they donate for social cause so ultimately the point to highlight here is that money is every important even for in all aspects of life so money means nothing but business so let's talk of whatever we are learning in terms of business because if you don't convert your research or your project into business or maybe used in the uh, society at large I think it's it's going to be just your report in the library just as a showpiece or you can say rather a garbage after five years because even after five years your library reports are also removed because the NAC procedure why documents are being stored by the universities is basically for accreditation purpose also the basic intention for accreditation to keep your records for five years is also that your the upcoming project should also see what the previous uh, seniors have done and they can extend it rather than doing the same thing from the scratch okay but after five years we generally see that these things become absolute at least in today's technology world that's why maybe the accreditation process is of five years so everything is in a round robin fashion okay it is interrelated it is dependent so similarly, we will see that how even machine intelligence, artificial intelligence and data mining are related to machine learning and indirectly or actually directly to business. So the purpose of machine learning it is to discover patterns in your data. OK, just keep this in note. This is very, very important. You learn the entire machine learning and you don't know the gist of it. So the summary is that you basically the purpose of the main objective of machine learning is to discover patterns in your data that means pattern mining and in our previous lectures of data mining we already told that the base of all the techniques we discussed in our previous lecture of data mining the main purpose was pattern extraction if you remember the kdp and the data mining process okay from data cleaning to data in integration and transmission transmission and then to pattern evaluation from the pattern evaluation then ultimately you get knowledge so all the techniques of data mining were on the basis of pattern mining so even here the same thing is that machine learning is to discover patterns in your data and then make predictions okay based on often 
complex patterns to answer business questions, detect and analyze trends, and help to solve problems. In our previous lecture on data mining analysis, we had learned about associations, about clustering, about classification, about trends and pattern. Okay, so just to highlight here that all the same things are even related in machine learning. Machine learning in business and other fields is effectively a method of data analytics. Now, since it is clearly mentioned that it's a method of data analytics and from where does the data analytics come? The OLTP and OLAP, okay, are the streams coming from the data mining rather. Okay, so that works by automating the process of building data models. So last time we had discussed about two models that is descriptive and predictive. So for predictions, as mentioned here, you can use the predictive models. Whereas if you want to do the analysis of the entire uh, data survey, then you can use the descriptive model. So the same model approach of data mining is also relevant exactly to machine learning. Machine learning in business and other areas such as healthcare and government departments is not simply another term for AI. Why AI is the umbrella term given for machines emulating human abilities, machine learning in specific branch of AI. Okay, so in our first lecture where we had tried to connect machine learning and data mining, uh, we had seen that pattern mining, okay, even the high computing networks, okay, the AI, you know, everything were the streams of data mining. So you can say that machine learning is a, related to data mining and it is a substream of artificial intelligence. So automatically, if A tends to B, okay, and B tends to C, A tends to C. So hence we can say that data mining is also related to artificial intelligence. So machine, intel, machine learning dependent on AI, okay, and machine learning dependent on data mining. So obviously data mining and artificial intelligence dependent on each other. So where basically the machines are trained to learn how to process and make use of the data. Another description often used as machine intelligence. So when you feed the algorithm to the machine, okay, you make a person learn something, okay, you are making the machine artificially intelligent. Okay, so by machine learning and combination of artificial intelligence, you get the outcome as machine intelligence. So as you can see here, all terms are interrelated and much the names suggest their meanings. The objective of machine learning in business is not only effective data collection, but to make use the ever increasing amounts being gathered by manipulating and analyzing it without heavy human input. Now, as we told earlier that if we have 10 faces, okay, to read, okay, there is a concept called as face reading in which there is a lot of uh, data analytics, a uh, lot of uh, computing on the face, features okay now depending upon what is the say size of the face okay what is the distance between the eyebrows what is the shape of the eyebrows what is the shape of the lips what are the shape of the nose you know you can predict a lot about a person by seeing the facial features of the face this is one of the computer vision application okay readily available in that machine learning has been used why because First of all, 100 faces were studied and they were seen that there were certain patterns like the people having uh, angular eyebrows. Okay, they are, they want, they are dominating. They want control over others. Okay, so they become, they can be good leaders, head of the departments and so on. Okay, similarly with the round eyebrows, those people are very emotional people. Okay, they are very adaptive people, very subtle people. Okay, they are very kind people. So how these features uh, computer vision was being analyzed by seeing certain data sets. After seeing certain data sets, certain patterns were analyzed and on that an algorithm was decided, okay, and it was fed to the machine. Now see, even studying 100 faces is not easy. So first 10 faces were seen, 
some algorithms were designed then they were tried to fed on 100 faces on the machine because machine for machine 10 and 100 is almost the same even for 100 not only 100 lakhs are also seen but for human studying lakhs of faces it's not easy so the machine uh, man saw 10 faces found out some patterns fed it on 100 faces on the machine learned certain patterns and then fed the patterns onto the machine to test it on 1 lakh machines uh, 1 lakh faces this type of example we also saw in our uh, previous lecture on some another data set so similarly machine intelligence enables complex and large data to be processed okay the more data you process actually the more intelligent your machine becomes right uh, it is you can also term intelligence as experience in today's world if you ask me intelligence is nothing but common sense because that is also a lot of people are missing out for even 2 into 10 they take out the calculator and calculate because they are become too dependent on the machine they have forgotten that machine has been made by man only and machine is rather becoming more intelligent than a human so in common sense is also an intelligence but even experience is also an intelligence okay a person when he teaches a student for the first time okay that means that the person yes he has the knowledge of the subject but what knowledge he comes when the questions are raised by the students and the knowledge after that which the person develops okay that is called a real intelligence and that is nothing but coming from the experience so even a gathering experiences and feeding to the machine is also machine intelligence neural networks is the best example okay of feeding the algorithms as a learning algorithm into the machine as a machine intelligence uh, neural network algorithms are the uh, most commonly used for this purpose but since neural networks is considered as a black box okay there are other competitive algorithms uh, that has been developed in competition so machine learning in business therefore offers a important commercial benefit because until you understand the business the why this data set you are using what type of predictive analysis you have to use so that you get the apt data as per the current marketing trends okay that is what you call it as commercial algorithms so most of the commercial and even non commercial algorithms benefit from machine learning and that is why it is the very uh, popular job seeking qualification so our data analytic consultants and data scientists use predictive analysis and machine learning to allow you to talk to you so get in touch to find out more so in brief our data scientist team use specialized machine learning techniques to predict the answers to our clients problems using a combination of the state of art extreme gradient boosting machine and generalized linear modeling al learning algorithms our client receive accurate predictions to their business questions now even uh, astrologers what they do okay you uh, if you just go to your horoscope you will get a daily horoscope right now see suppose a person is a virgo or a capricorn or an aries or a taurus now see there are lakhs of people who are aries do you think that the daily prediction coming in the paper will be applicable to all the aries if suppose it is getting that you are, you are going to get married so can everybody is going to get married in that phase no okay it's a general prediction but if you want to go for a question based prediction you need to see the personal horoscope of that person and you would be very uh, astonished to know that the in entire world only six people horoscopes they match you won't believe that even two twins okay they also have a different horoscope because in a horoscope apart from date of birth and place time also is important so even the twins they are coming at the same time but there is some uh, fraction of seconds or maybe some minutes gap in between them that's why you see that two twins maybe they look alike their feature at times their characteristics are absolutely different okay so this is the real life example what i'm trying to say so if any astrologer he takes the questions of the clients okay that questions would be on some machine algorithm which uh, that person has studied 
on previous enormous case studies on the experience of which it will be able to analyze if we get the similar patterns in that particular horoscope. So going ahead, how machine learning is used. So the objective of machine learning varies depending on what field it is deployed to. Some of the examples is financial services, governmental, health, retail, fraud. So if you just go on this side and go each and everything in detail, if you ask me, in every field there is data mining and machine learning. Okay, even our body is machine. Even the plants are machine. There is a certain algorithm by which you need to, you know, uh, go a seed. It's a procedure how you grow a plant. It's a procedure how you maintain the plant. It's a procedure how you trim the plant so that, you know, your plant goes on increases. It's a procedure how to protect your plant from pesticides. So it is also a machine learning. Okay, you can even have some uh cameras fit on the plants which periodically check the progress of the plant and there can be timers when it can suggest to you see your plant requires certain um, nutrients now so it's time it's high time you should give some uh what you can say wormy compost or maybe some uh, home related uh nutrients to your plants okay jo hum cow dung se aajkal ghar mein khad bana rahe hain okay using uh, the manure okay home manure you can even use that but see in our in our busy life sometimes we even don't remember that it's been high time your plants need requirements okay we just grumble that the plant is not uh, growing okay even in terms of babies which we saw the example that these small babies they are not able to speak so there can be even some cameras which can do image processing on the babies and see the gestures that when the baby cries, which type of crying predicts what. Sometimes the baby's cries are also of different patterns. Okay, if the baby's stomach is crying, the baby's cries of different pattern. If the baby is hungry, the cry is different. Okay, and you can even set timer in your machine learning algorithm that see the baby was fed two hours back. Now two hours the baby should not be fed. Sometimes what happens, the mother is so much busy that she forgets that she fed the child just 15 minutes back. The child starts crying and without even a single thought, she overfeeds the baby and the chi child cries more. So, you know, this is these, these are the areas, what I'm trying to say, that you if you touch any area, okay, nothing is the area which is untouched for machine learning. Now, how data mining can be used for uh, baby prediction? You have to take the experiences of the other mothers. Okay, that's why you always call your mother or the mother-in-law for your help uh, when the baby is born. Why you call them experiences? And what we call it, just discuss that the experience is nothing but the prior history, okay, the knowledge they have and the experience. And that is nothing but the machine intelligence. So how we help to achieve your objective in machine learning? Okay, so we can start by building small training sets. You need not rush okay, directly onto data mining. Okay, you should first use some, in our last lecture, we had discussed about cross-validation. Okay, we had discussed about 80-20 uh, rule. Okay, you just take 20 data sets, try to train that data, find out some patterns, and then apply on the 80% of the data. So that is 20, why? Because 20 is a smaller part. So first start building smaller training sets, okay? And then you can do some exhaustive research. Exhaustive research means manual calculations. After you have done the manual calculations, which is a part of the descriptive model, then you can start going for the heuristic approach and design the predictive model. Okay, so if you just revise our previous lecture, all these topics are quite interrelated. So for example, by understanding the characteristics and behavior of your best and worst clients okay you can use this as a training set that can be applied against larger ones so okay so if you have some worst experiences that is also a experience okay so you should apply that similar experience should not come in the future that also you can feed it as a training set and if you have some very good experiences that also you can feed okay so this is how you can train your present system the result will be 
sought perspective clients in which a highly probability of being the best profitable client so initially you start with small and gradually when you uh, keep on training your machine in one of the it will be a high probability that it will be one of the best okay so machine learning in business can also be used for compete intelligently obviously the more uh, you make your machine more intelligent the more you can uh, satisfy your clients in terms of business then enhance customer service so the more features you add on okay and you try to improve that service from again your experience okay for example you you uh, you get the feedback of your clients see always you are not going to get uh, good feedback okay because somebody is not best it, it it always you have a scope of improvement so you have to always take feedback negative feedback also positively right so your negative feedback you can consider it as a challenge and you convert that challenge into an opportunity and i'm pretty sure that your services are going to be competitive then improve lead nurturing manage your sales funnel detect fraudulent activity outsmart the opposition predict journey times predict how long jobs may take okay this is also a major factor okay you have to give the service as quick as possible okay the time should be quite uh, practical then understand the uh, demographics and buying behavior of your market of, of course this is very very important if the client has come to buy the toothpaste you don't start you know uh, showing him immediately the brushes toothbrushes i know that if the person wants toothpaste he may opt for brushes but first you have to entertain him on the purpose for which he has come and approached you scope your prospectives and customers you need to be very very uh, what you can say precise okay. and certain about the your requirements uh, uh, customers requirements and your services more about machine learning see uh, as we said earlier there is there are various techniques which are used in machine learning and data mining okay they those are uh, regression techniques classification clustering association rules regression okay then we have models like uh, descriptive and predictive okay so descriptive and predictive are uh, data mining models but they are used in machine learning as well similarly classification and clustering they are used in data mining as well as machine learning okay so while we had revised about the clustering and classification data mining we had also discussed about the supervised learning and unsupervised learning so basically your machine learning models fall into two broad categories supervised learning and unsupervised if you remember in supervised learning model see this is all about you know how to develop the training set okay so the model is trained with a large volume of data and algorithms then used to predict an outcome from future input okay uh, for example you have 1000 samples so you try to train your machine with all the 1000 samples the example which i gave you last time was that suppose you have got faces indian faces chinese faces japanese faces so you train your algorithm with all the type of faces whatever you have the more samples you will have the more training would be efficient okay but the point in supervised learning is that they are the seen data just remember uh, to differentiate between supervised and unsupervised is supervised learning is the seen data that means you feed 1000 faces onto your algorithm if some 1000 one face which is unseen data comes into picture then probably supervised learning would not be very very practical okay so for that then what is the alternative unsupervised learning unsupervised learning is all the unseen data you try to train so you try to develop the models okay assuming certain uh, predictions right but see without the samples exhaustive search how can you predict right there can be mistakes being human for example whenever we do innovation then also we say that you should go for literature survey why because if your innovation is novel you think about it but it may happen that it has been already covered 
by somebody else. So even if you are going for innovation, you should do research. That is literature survey. Similarly, if you are going to uh, develop a model for unseen data, you should have some model uh, by seeing the seen data, right? So unsupervised learning is unseen data, whereas supervised learning is seen data. So I had told you in our previous lecture that there is this uh, in-between mode called as the semi-supervised learning. First, you train your 20 samples, okay, 20% samples rather, by supervised learning. And then you design your 80% of the samples by unsupervised learning. So that is called as combination of supervised and unsupervised and uh, concluded to semi-supervised learning. Okay, so in our next lecture, we will be seeing the different algorithms used for supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Okay, so for neural networks, since it's a black box, unsupervised learning is used. And for supervised learning, regression and classification algorithms are used. If I differentiate between classification and clustering, okay, as I said last time, that clustering is a part of classification, okay, because clustering is a group of similar data, whereas classification is differentiating the groups rather. So clustering is opposite of classification. So for classification methods are used for supervised learning and clustering methods are used for unsupervised learning. So this is all about machine learning for the day. Okay, I hope uh, you found this lecture useful. And if you have any doubts, okay, you can mail me on the given email ID or you can post the questions on the group. I would be very happy to solve your doubts. Thank you very much.